So now that the motherboard is in place, we're going to go ahead and start attaching some of the front panel wires, front panel cabling, as well as the power supply cabling. Always refer back to your motherboard manual as well as your chassis manual to determine which wires you need to use and uh, which ones you want to connect up. So for example, um, most of these chassis will have a, a connector that's labeled hard drive LED. I typically don't connect this one up because the only thing it's doing is, is uh, sensing activity on the hard drive when it's being accessed. And in a home theater environment, I find that a little bit distracting to have a little blinking light when I'm trying to watch a movie or things like that. So I tend to not connect that one up. Um, but the other ones like the power switch and the reset switch and, and uh, power LED I tend to connect up so that I know when I've got activity when, I, when the machine's turned on. Obviously the power switch is needed for, for uh, powering the system up as well as the reset switch if you hit the reset button. So we're going to go ahead and connect those up. In this particular case my pin header for the power switch and all the front panel connectors is up here in the right hand corner of the board. So we connect that up. We connect up our reset. And we connect up the uh, power LED uh, and get that in place. In this particular case, the power LED spans three uh, pins where uh, the middle pin is a no connect. Um, generally, what you would want to do is no normally, especially on this motherboard, those pins are actually together. So you, what you'd use is a, a toothpick or something to move one of those wires uh, over. Once we have our wires connected up, then we connect up our front chassis, our front panel uh, header connectors, which are our USB, our Firewire, and our HD audio headers. And those are going to connect up. Again, follow the motherboard reference manual. You've got different pin headers along the back here on, on the edge of this particular board. Uh, for, for example, you've got multiple USB headers, you've got a 1394 header, and you've got an audio header in the back. And so that's where we're going to connect up these, these particular cable, case cables. We'll start with the HD audio header, which connects up into the back corner. Then we're going to go to a USB header. And we'll connect up the 1394 header. Again, this is where zip ties would come in handy to be able to tie all this stuff off and keep the airflow nice and clean. And then I've got one more USB to connect up for the remote control. Now this one's not particularly labeled. It's only a, a one five wire uh, connector. And so really what you need to do is you need to look at the pin headers on the other board and you'll see it goes red, white, green, and black, or brown and black. And so you're going to want to connect it up the same way so that your, your uh, device is not connected up backwards. So be careful with that. Again, follow the motherboard manual. Make sure you uh, uh, have all the, the pin headers connected up the right way. Once the cabling uh, front panel cables are done and the wires are done, then we move over to the power supply cables. And you can see we've got a large uh, wad of, of cabling here. The ones that you're going to particularly need for this particular build is the main power cable, obviously, as well as the CPU power cabling, which is this black and yellow guy right here. And then in this particular case, we've got an extra PCIe uh, connector. We don't need that, so I would normally zip tie that out of the way. And then depending on how many hard drives and SATA drives and, and uh, optical drives and all the other devices that need power, you're going to need some of these. You may not need all of them. Again, some of these are SATA connectors. Some of these are typical Molex connectors. Um, so you're going to have to figure out what you need for your particular build. Anything you don't use, I would go ahead and zip tie off so that uh, they're out of the way. And we'll start connecting those guys up. So I'll take the CPU power, plug it in over here next to the CPU socket. Take the motherboard's main power. Again, it's keyed, so it can only go in one way. And plug that into the motherboard's main power connector. The rest I'm going to go ahead and move out of the way for right now, but I'm going to use some of those for this optical drive as well as the hard drive. And in this particular case, the amplifier card that we're going to put into the system. So now that we have uh, the, the power supply cabling done and the front panel headers and, and all that kind of stuff out of the way, while I was connecting up the power to the optical drive and the hard drive, I went ahead and connected up the SATA data cables. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish those, connecting those up to the motherboard. And 
these I'm going to go ahead and connect up right here and right below that. And again, I will go ahead and get these routed so that they don't uh, block up the airflow. I'm going to try and tuck them under here and get them out of the way. You know, normally I would go through the process and do zip ties on everything and make sure it's really clean so that I've got very clean airflow through the system. But you get the gist of what's going on here.